Beach Bend is located in Bowling Green, Kentucky, and let me just say, this is an interesting park. It's kind of one that in the enthusiast world not a whole lot of people get around to, but it's definitely worth stopping by at some point. It almost feels like a permanent carnival, they have lots of variety of attractions, and of course the main star of the show is their GCI Kentucky Rumbler. That's a pretty good ride, and eventually I'm going to have a full separate review for that roller coaster up on my channel, so I'm not going to talk too much about that in this video. Instead, I'm going to really focus on the park as a whole. I got to spend a couple of hours here, and really that's all you're going to need if you visit Beach Bend. Don't feel like you're going to have to spend all day here. Now, you probably might want a little bit more time if you do decide to do their water park, which actually, just walking around, their water park looked pretty impressive. I didn't actually end up trying out any of their slides or go in their wave pool or anything, but just by looking at it, it looked pretty solid. So I think if you're looking to spend more time there, then plan on doing the water park. But when we were there, we didn't really encounter any lines or anything. I don't know if it's going to be like that all the time or if on weekends it gets pretty busy. But from what I could tell, lines shouldn't really be an issue. The one thing you will want to take note of is that the park sometimes has some weird operating hours, like it closes like towards the evening, so it's never open at night or anything. At least when I went, that was the case. But just running through some of the attractions real quick that stood out to me, they have lots of your classics, like they have the Viking ship. They have a starship, one of those things where the centrifugal force pushes you up against the wall. They also have a spinning coaster, one of those SBF spinner Visa models. And they also have a wild mouse, which I mean, if you sit in that thing off balance, you're going to get that spinning. So that's a solid ride. They just have the three roller coasters, which is really all this park needs. It'd eventually be cool to see them get something a bit more larger scale. But I think right now they're fine the way that they're at. I know one ride that you definitely shouldn't pass up on is their drop tower. These things are crazy. If you've ridden one of these model drop towers, when you get to the top, you don't know when it's going to drop. So because of that, it really catches you off guard because you have no idea how much further you get to the top. And then as soon as you hit the top, boom, you're falling. And it breaks pretty close to the ground too. So definitely do the drop tower while you're there. The other thing that I'd say try out, you may not like it depending on what you're into, is Scat 2. This ride is dizzying. Think about your classic Starship ride that uses that centrifugal force, but this time it is on a dual axis arm. So there are two different ones going at once. And so it's spinning you quickly where you, you do slide up against the back, but then at one point it stops and then spins you the other direction. It's a pretty weird ride. I have never seen that anywhere else other than Beach Bend. If you're not a fan of spinny attractions, then this park may not be the one for you because a lot of their rides are spin based. So you have the spinning wild mouse, the spinning mini coaster, even the classic claw attraction, or some of these rides that you'll typically see at carnivals. Again, they really focused on spinning you. When I think about the rides here that don't spin you, it's pretty much Kentucky Rumbler and the Drop Tower. Everything else spins you to some extent. Now talking about the park in general, it's clean. I think the layout is pretty simple. It kind of goes around this lake and then you have the water park off to one side, but you do have some attractions that are laid out and kind of spursed out in the water park almost. So that's a little weird how sometimes you are walking right next to these water slides, but you're going to like a different ride. But for the most part, a lot of the rides are placed around each other. The actual park itself is kind of located in the middle of nowhere. Like when you're driving to get there, you're like driving through a neighborhood and then you have to go up like a driveway to get to the parking lot. It's really weird. Parking is free though, so that's nice. And you do pay to enter, so this isn't one of those things where you can just walk right in and then pay per ride. There is like an admission fee. So it's an interesting little place. I think if you're an enthusiast mainly looking to get some coaster credits, I'd say it's worth it to stop by here eventually, but this may not be a park that you feel like you have to come back to all the time. Like I went, I rode Kentucky Rumbler a few times, hopped on one time on the other roller coasters, and did attractions such as the Drop Tower, their Claw, and they even have like a haunted house, and that's kind of a fun, cheesy old dark ride. So that's kind of entertaining. I mean, after that, I was pretty much good. So like I said, you shouldn't need too much time here. But I think that's also the type of park that this is. This isn't going to be one of those massive amusement parks looking to have you stay all day. You come here to kill a few hours, and that's pretty much good. So those are some of my thoughts on Beach Bend and Bowling Green, Kentucky. Let me know about what you think of this park, if you've been here, if you're wanting to go. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews coming soon to Coaster Studios.